Welcome to Sibspot. Today's Reddit stories are from Petty Revenge. Our first post is by InterestingCake691. Swear at me for letting you walk past me on a narrow staircase? Say goodbye to your fancy purse. I used to be a janitor at an educational institute. Most of the people were nice, but in a building of hundreds, there are bound to be a few characters. There was this narrow staircase with a small break in the middle. Only one person could go up at a time, and if there were two people approaching each other, then one had to step aside. Well, I started my workday, carrying the supplies to restock the bathrooms. I hear someone coming down, so I step to the side to let her pass. Effing D-head, I heard her quietly mutter as she walked past. Fast forward three months. I was cleaning the second, smaller building. There was a special lost and found bucket that was only for the second building, but it was kept in a secluded cupboard that no one knew about, so I would just transfer all the belongings from there to the main reception, since belongings kept in that cupboard would go uncollected. Well, I saw this fancy purse there. I should give it to the main reception, but you know what? According to operating guidelines, it goes in the building's lost and found. The secluded lost and found, which no one knows anything about. So I put it there and kept working. I saw her with a new purse in a few days. A few months later, I handed my notice and started a new job, the purse still in that cupboard. The only thing that comes off as a little confusing about this story is that he never actually mentions that he knows it's her purse. It just He just gets to it at the end. So I feel like he should have mentioned at the very beginning that he saw her with that very fancy purse. But it also makes me wonder if she was swearing under her breath thinking about somebody else because sometimes that happens. Because there's literally no reason for her to be swearing at him for being on the stairs with her at the same moment. People are kind of surprised that he would recognize her purse, especially since he says there's hundreds of people in the building. But I guess this really struck a nerve with him. Our next story is by Plot Hole 2017. My stepdad wore the same shirt I got in trouble for during the parent teacher meeting. First off, let me preface by saying both my mother and stepdad are absolute scum. But even the worst people in all of human history sometimes have their good moments and this was one of them. I was 14 and I was in middle school. I was so proud of my Cornholio shirt from Beavis and Butthead. It was a mugshot of Beavis with his shirt up over his head and the caption read, I am the great Cornholio. I need TP for my bungle. I didn't know what the heck a cornhole was. I knew a pie hole was a mouth, and I could kind of figure out with the inclusion of the word hole that maybe it meant anus, but I really didn't know for sure, and apparently my mom and stepdad didn't either. But my agriculture teacher, a religious fundamentalist who couldn't let an hour go by without shoehorning his religion into his lessons, pulled me out of class and took me up to the principal's office over the shirt after I started doing Beavis impressions in class with my shirt up. I didn't know what it was about until we were in the hallway, and he said, I find that highly offensive. This? I asked. Yes, he said. And just an FYI, this was in the 90s. Even then, humans thought there was nothing in the world more important than the fact that they were offended by something stupid. Anyway, they made me turn the shirt inside out for the rest of the day. I told my mom and stepdad about it, and they didn't know what was up his rear end either, other than the fact that he was a religious lunatic. Anyway, a few weeks later, it was time for parent-teacher conferences, and my mom remembered that BS. She said she wanted to ask what the heck his problem was with that shirt. My stepdad decided to wear it during the meeting. The best part, that he was an effing cop. I didn't go to the meeting with him, but I'd have given just about anything to see that psycho's face. Um, religious fundamentalists are crazy and terrible people, but if you're standing up in the middle of class with your shirt over your head and saying, I am the great Cornholio, maybe you deserve to be pulled into the office. If it was just you wearing the shirt, it wouldn't be a big deal, but you literally said that you wore the shirt over your head and announced that you're the great Cornholio. That's disruptive. This is coming from somebody who used to work in a school. I'd send you to the principal's office as well. 
If you were just doing it during downtime in the class with your friends, it's not a big deal. It really isn't. But some when Beavis and Butthead came out, people were so offended by it. It was the most offensive, terrible thing. And, you know, a super religious person is bound to be way more offended by this stuff than anybody else. Our next post is by Smaller Italian. I get to watch the company I work for crumble without me, and it's glorious. Context. I have been working in IT my whole working life. Several years ago, I was approached by someone who owns a small private college and offered a job. I had several years of IT experience at that time, mostly working at colleges in the area. I accepted the job. There, I was the only IT guy. There was no IT department, just me. The internet was laughable. Something like 100 megabits per second for the whole school. They were trying to expand and get approval for a new program, so I took on the daunting task of getting the school up to date. They were simultaneously working to move to online tests and homework. Everything was on paper when I started there, so I moved very fast to do this. I also assisted with providing whatever paperwork, spreadsheets, schedules, etc. the school needed to get their new program approval finalized. Once that was all done, I continued to work as the only IT on campus. Then, my boss asked me to work in admissions in addition to my own department to take applications for the new program they got. There were so many other jobs they gave me that I don't even remember them all. They needed about six people to do all of that work. But I did it. Fast forward to 2021, I decide I've had enough. I enroll in the program that I helped the school get. Took their crazy entrance exam, it had something like a 10% pass rate, Scored in the top five for that year. Then I quit my job. That place had become the worst job I'd ever worked at. The boss had no respect for anyone around them, and the office had six or seven people working in it, including me. I was constantly being accused of doing nothing all day when I was working. When I quit, they did not hire anyone new to fill my position. They instead passed my work on to three other people, who of course already had their own jobs to do. I watched them struggle for about a month before another one quit. Their work also just got dispersed among the remaining employees. That left four people working full-time in the office. One of them, the one who had the absolute most jobs out of everyone there, started no call, no showing, at least once a week. Now, one of my favorite co-workers told me that she was just offered a new job with a 40% pay increase benefits, did I mention this job I had didn't offer benefits, and room to grow. She is leaving in August, so that leaves three workers. And the guy that started no-showing has already informed the boss that he won't be working there anymore after this year is over. So that leaves two employees. One of them is part-time. I feel bad for taking joy in this, but something feels good about watching everyone get fed up with the garbage management there at the same time. For some reason, when I was reading that story, it kind of felt like an adult's version of five little monkeys jumping on a bed, one fell off and bumped his head, four little monkeys jumping on a bed. <laughs> They're just falling like dominoes. Our next story is by Depression Era Mom Jean. Ruin our experience? We'll ruin yours, and we'll do it better. Our family is the best, and we love a good party. Every year pre-COVID, on the 4th of July, we would have the same tradition. Go to the local parade, celebrate my brother-in-law's birthday, and then go to the town's local marina where there are rides, a live band, tons of local vendors, and a fireworks show with music to close out the night. As you can imagine, it's incredibly busy. This year was extra special. With COVID finally having slowed down, this was, A, the first time in three years that we were going to be able to go to the parade in the marina as a family, B, the first time in over 10 years that we were able to celebrate with our father who moved back to California at the beginning of the pandemic. And C, our cousin's first time in America, and thus, her first 4th of July. We got to the marina early, set up our lawn chairs directly behind the iron barrier that keeps people from plummeting into the water, so we would have an unobstructed view of the fireworks and be able to enjoy it as a family. Just before the fireworks, I... 31 female, ran off to get a snack, and when I came back, I saw that two girls in their early 20s had put themselves directly in front of our lawn chairs. 
My dad told them that we were all together and had been saving those spots, which is why the lawn chairs were there, but the girls just ignored him, forcing us to move the chairs. This split our family into three groups, the group to the girl's left, the group to their right, and the group behind them. Now, one thing to know is, God Bless the USA is our jam, and it just so happens to be the first song they played during the fireworks show. As soon as it started, my sister, 34, brother, 41, and I, the group standing behind the girls, began singing and swaying, arms draped over one another, playing air drums, and just being silly overall. Behind us, two tipsy girls around 24 followed suit singing, and before long, my sister had draped her arm over the girls and brought them into our group to create one long chain of loudly swaying bodies. It's important to note that our family does not drink alcohol and thus was completely sober during this interaction. We just wanted to be able to be weirdos together. They kept annoyingly glancing behind us singing, and my dad, who was to their left, trying to interact with his grandchildren, who were to their right, the tipsy girls who were determined to be heard over the music, and they clearly regretted choosing that spot. We, on the other hand, had a great time. It's so annoying when people sit in front of you when you're set up close to a place at a, at a fireworks show. It's, it happens all the time, too. Some people are just so inconsiderate. So I am... Very glad that these guys got their, what's the word for it, comeuppance, I believe. It's not a word anybody uses anymore, but you guys get the idea. Our stories for today have come to a close. Until we meet again, have the best day. <laughs>